Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habtu fillah we know that waswas many of us are afflicted by it and this is something which is natural and i wanted to mention a hadith of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because there are so many questions that arise about waswas so many people are afflicted and affected and they want to know uh issues about their ibadat is it accepted is it not accepted but i just wanted to mention one hadith of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam with just a brief explanation by imam uh, abdul aziz al rajihi hafizallahu ta'ala one of our mashayikh in riyadh which lets us know that we're all of uh, all afflicted and that we should strive our best to not let the shaitan and not let his whispers and not let the evil of our own selves uh distract us from the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and regardless of how that waswas affects you whether it affects you and you think you're not being sincere whether it affects you and you think your prayer you didn't uh prepare your ibadah properly your wudu or your salat or whatever way or that you felt that you entered a uh into kufr disbelief many people they ask they say I'm a kafir now I'm a mubtadi' now I thought this and I thought that but it's the emr ليس كذلك the the affair is not like that and let's listen to this beautiful hadith of our prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of those who are sincere and following his sunna and may Allah forgive us of our many many shortcomings and our sins amin ya rabbil alamin an abi hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تدخلون الجنة This is another hadith عن ابي هريره رضي الله تعالى عنه قال جاء ناس من اصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فسالوه ان نجد في انفسنا ما يتعظم اهله اهلنا ان يتكلم به قال وقد وجدتموه قال نعم قال ذاك صريح ايمان صريح الايمان اخرجه مسلم ذا حديث صحيح مسلم حديث ابي ابي هريره رضي الله تعالى عنه uh and he reported that some of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in came and asked him some thought crosses our minds that one of us finds it too horrible to express he the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said do you really experience this they said yes he remarked that is manifest iman you know meaning that is true iman before we get into what imam uh, abdul aziz al rajihi have the law taala mentions j- just so we have a good tasawwur of this uh, and understand in general the meaning uh and the relevance for us so here the companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in as abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reported that they uh came to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said you know basically they said uh to paraphrase you know messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam you know we find sometimes that we think horrible things you know horrible things horrible things could mean uh, things related to kufr things related to uh you know I- issues of disbelief I'm not saying that the companion radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in thought this but basically they're saying that these things were too horrible to articulate and in fact when this type of waswas comes to you even if it's kufr even if it's something strange because the shaitan whispers and your nafs sometimes whispers and what you listen to outside it sometimes becomes a source of whispering that you might say you know as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in another hadith that the person can get to a state where they say well who created a law you know or uh you know how do i know islam is true these kind of whisperings these are whisperings don't take them seriously so the messenger of allah sallallahu so the companion of allah 
said, some thought comes, uh, crosses our minds that one of us finds it too horrible to express. Meaning that these evil thoughts come to their mind and they're so horrible. They don't want to articulate it. They don't want to speak about it. They, they fear they can't tell anyone about these things because it's just, uh, you know, something so severe and something so wicked. So the Prophet ﷺ said, do you really experience this? So first he, as the Messenger والسلام, often did, he would make, uh, you know, to affirm what they say, to, 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 to let them think about it and answer it. And reflect and say, you know, what you're saying, is this really true? Is this true what you're saying? And of course they said, yes. So the Prophet ﷺ said, that is manifest iman. That is real iman. So what does that mean? That's real iman. Why would the Prophet ﷺ say in an answer to their question about waswas or their statement about waswas, their statement about whisperings, to them, why would he say that that's real iman? So Sheikh Abdulaziz al-Raji, hafadhullah ta'ala, he mentions, let's just go, because he gave just a very small ta'liq, it's his explanation, and I advise you, if you uh, have, to get this explanation of uh, Sahih Muslim, I mean, it's just ta'liqat, it's, it's fantastic, uh, you know, it's actually a sharh, but you know, a lot of it, he just gives very brief uh, ta'liqat or explanation, so he said, where the Prophet ﷺ said, "Thaka sahih iman," that is uh, manifest iman or true iman, and in another narration, "Tilka mahtal iman." You know that is true iman or that's pure khalis iman. So what Sheikh Abdulaziz Raji he said, he said, "Lisa marad anna uh, waswas sahih iman." He said it's not meant. What's not, what's meant here? Or our understanding of this hadith is not that having waswas is pure iman. That's not what it means. He said, innama katam al waswas. Rather, it is ceasing, stopping the waswas and giving serious precedence or giving great importance to ceasing waswas. You know, making that. Something you're 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 striving and you're fighting the waswas. You are opposing it. You are cutting it off. You're saying that's that's not even real. That's not me. I believe in Allah. Amin tu billahi wa rasuli. I believe in Allah and the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then he said, wa karaha tuha wa adama tukalama biha. This is very important. So he said, and hating it, detesting the waswas. To not to 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 detest it because if you if something came in your mind and it was a statement of kufr because that happens, don't think it, it doesn't happen to the salihin. This is the salihin. This is the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam radiyallahu taala anhu majmain meaning majmum in a Sahaba, a group of the Sahaba radiyallahu taala anhu majmain said that these horrible thoughts come to them. So that means it happens to the salihin. So that our ulama are less than that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve them all, the living, and have mercy upon the deceased. I mean, of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And then, what about you and I? We're just the average Muslims trying to strive, trying to practice a little bit, trying to understand our deen, trying to do some good deeds, trying to remove some of these sins that we're in. What about us? Of course we get waswas. Sometimes it's things of kufr. So understand the habit of Allah. I want you to understand this because I get so many questions about this and people will make it to themselves. Part of this process is going to war with the shaitan and going to war with your waswas. It's fighting your waswas. So the sheikh mentions that taking this affair very serious and hating the waswas. Oh, how did the shaitan whisper that crazy mess to me? Uh-uh, I'm not going for it. Don't let the shaitan play you like that. Cut it off immediately. And refraining from speaking about it. 
So don't speak about that unless, meaning you have a shuba, you have a real doubt and you need to speak to someone of knowledge that you trust, one of the ulama, if you have the ability, or can get the question to one of the ulama, or those tulab al-ilm that can help you with that. You, you, you say them, because we don't, in Islam, we don't have confessions. We don't need to confess. You don't need to confess to the talib al-ilm. You don't need to confess to the imam. You don't need to confess to the shaykh. You confess your sins to Allah Azza wa Jal. So, with that being the case, if you need more details because you're fearful, you don't really know, then you ask, and you could say, such and such thought came to me. You know, what's the hukum? Whatever the case may be. But as the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, said, I mean, uh, and, and other evidences, and this is why the Shaykh is saying that, uh, there's other evidences the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasalam, said, which means that his ummah is not uh, held responsible uh, for that which they uh, do out of forgetfulness and that which they do uh, out of a mistake or, or from related to the waswas, if they, as long as they don't speak about it. So it lets us know that if, even if uh, the shaitan whispers something or our egos whisper something to us or whatever the case may be, as long as you don't articulate it and as long as you don't act upon it, min rahmatillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you won't be held accountable. There's no sin for that. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless the shaykh, uh, Imam Abdulaziz al-Raji, hafadhullah ta'ala, for his beautiful explanation and all those who are responsible for producing such beautiful works. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all the ulama of the salaf and those who carry the deen and those who continue to carry the deen. And may Allah wa ta'ala forgive us of our many, many sins and protect us from waswas. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.